Hello Coastal Lovers. So if you have been following this channel as of recently, you have probably seen the post that I recently moved to Florida. So that means I do not live in the Cincinnati area anymore. But don't worry, the channel's identity is not going to change and I will still talk about the roller coasters at Kings Island. But back to the video. The state of Florida is a fantastic state for roller coasters. You have top notch family coasters, great beat and loopers, and even worldwide famous parks like Disney World. But sadly for the state, I have not been to any of the parks besides all the Disney parks, but I hope I get to visit Busch Gardens Tampa and Universal this year. So I gathered 15 roller coasters from the Sunshine State and ranked all of them from worst to best. So here are the 15 best roller coasters in the state of Florida. Welcome to King's Coasters. If you are new here and have been to the incredible Sunshine State, King's Coasters will be for you and it will be amazing if you took the opportunity to subscribe to the channel. We are halfway to 300, but we are only 50 away till 200. That's actually crazy. We started this channel in November, and I felt like we started it 2 months ago. But anyways, so you remember what I said I gathered 15 roller coasters? Well, I kinda lied. I actually grabbed 16, so that means there is an honorable mention, and the honorable mention that I'll get out of the way with is Hurricane. This is an ENF Miller Highmiler that originally operated at 50 Gabillion other parks. One of them is actually at the defunct park Celebration City in Branson, which is the park that had Ozark Wildcat. It was there from 2003 to when the park closed in 2008. Then it operated at Wild Adventures as Viking Voyage from 2010 to 2018. Then it was in storage at Fun Spot Atlanta for a year. Then it moved down to Kissimmee on Christmas Eve of 2019. This coaster is an honorable mention because this coaster looks so dang sketchy. I've heard this feels like it's going to fall apart. I think this ride is unique, which is another reason why it's an honorable mention. So let's get started with the list by going to the other Fun Spot Park for White Lightning. This is a mini GCI with an out and back layout. This coaster is the literal definition of a baby Mystic Timbers. The airtime for this coaster is pretty solid, and the layout is a good one. And it looks smooth for being 11 years old, which is great because the Florida heat and cycling daily can be a bit to handle, which another coaster had gone through until some retracking happened, and that coaster will be taking the next place spot. It is given to Mind Blower. If I made this video in the past, this coaster would have not placed anywhere close to this list, because this coaster looks so horrifically rough. You can really see that in the POV. Busted retracking by RMC, and no it's not RMC conversion, made this coaster so much better. The layout for this coaster is top notch, I love all the near misses with the supports, and the overbanks and zero G roll are great. I hope I get to ride this coaster someday, it looks great. So going from Orlando to Tampa, I've talked about this coaster before, but I don't really have high expectations for this ride, it is Sheikra. This is one of the 200 foot dive coasters that B&M has produced. If you've ever ridden Griffin, Valraven, and Yukon Striker, it's a very similar ride. The only one I've done is Valraven, and I think it's alright, it's nothing to write home about. And I expect the same for Sheikra. In my eyes, it is a combination of two Ohio B&Ms, which is Valraven and Diamondback. You have the layout, looks, and the experience of Valraven, but you have the visual of the splashdown of Diamondback. This coaster looks good, but not great. I would grab a ride if I visit Busch Gardens Tampa. So going back to Orlando, this is another B&M, and it's a flyer with Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. This is our first coaster from SeaWorld Orlando, and it's a B&M flyer. In my opinion, this coaster is kind of scary. It's because when you're climbing up the lift hill, you're looking straight down at the ground, and it's pretty freaky. I've also heard the forces on B&M flyers pull are insane, like the pretzel loop for example. That looks so forceful. I also like the water emitter effect when the ride goes over the pond at the front entrance. It's a great way for an entrance to a ride. This ride looks insane. So staying at SeaWorld Orlando, this coaster looks top tier for its own specific ride model. It's the Flawless Coaster with Kraken. So we are staying at SeaWorld for Kraken. This is a B&M Flawless and one of the best. You can see that in both halves. The first half has the huge inversions and the whip, and the second half uses the trenches like another B&M which we'll talk about a little bit later. The ride also used to have VR, but just like the other coasters that had VR like Superman the Ride and New Revolution, it didn't last long. I will gladly take a ride on this coaster. A similar coaster to it is the Incredible Hulk at Universal's Islands of Adventure. This coaster is a rare model from B&M. 
a sit-down coaster, only a few were ever built. An example is Wildfire at Silver Dollar City. This ride also got retracted a few years ago, back in half of 2015 and most of 2016. The launch for this coaster is great, and the placement is absolutely beautiful. The Cobra Wheel in the first loop over the water looks fantastic. This is also the coaster that made most enthusiasts become what they are today. I am so glad that Universal retracted this ride, because it runs 3 trains daily and yearly that can put a lot of stress on this ride's age. I hope I get to ride this. So staying with B&M, we are staying with a the sit-down theme with Kumba. So we are going back to Busch Gardens Tampa for Kumba. Like I said in this video in the card above, this is a great coaster to talk about when you're talking about old school B&M. The whip on this coaster is fantastic and the pacing is amazing. This also looks like it has a little shake, so I'll prepare for it when I experience this ride. I have high expectations for this coaster. So again, we are staying with B&M once again. But don't worry, number 7 will not be a B&M. This coaster, I did not expect to get so much love. It is the newly opened coaster, Pipeline the Surf Coaster. This is a brand new surf coaster, and we should see a lot more of them out there. Instead of the normal stand-ups where you are crushed with positive Gs and your feet cramp up, these seats balance on an airtime moment or helix or valley. Turns out I was wrong about this coaster. If you're here since the channel started, I uploaded a video about the top 5 bucket list coasters of 2023, and I said on the honorable mentions part of the video that I expect this to be a big failure, but nope, it was the exact opposite. I hope this gets the award in the GTA for the sleeper hit coaster, either that or Big Red Mountain might win the award. I'll be fine with either. So finally, we'll be taking a break with B&M, and let's talk intimate with Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Here's something funny, when I first heard of this coaster, I thought it was a mock, but nope, it was an Intamin. Anyways, this looks like one of the best family coasters out there. Everyone I've talked to that had rode this ride had a huge smile on their face and it was so much fun. I can see that, because the launches have some good zip and the theming is top notch, and I know it's universal. So pretty much this is normal universal theming, and you can see that in the little surprise in the middle of the ride, but I won't spoil it. This coaster looks fantastic. So moving along, this will sadly be another B&M. This coaster actually looks really good, it's Montu. This is a B&M invert, and it's definitely the best. This coaster has so many trenches, and this is the coaster that I talked about in the Kraken section of the video. The inversions on this coaster are snappy, and the transitions are the same description as the inversions, snappy. But this also looks pretty smooth for it being 27 years old, but I really hope this stays for a while, or they can pull an ounce of adventure and retrack it. This coaster looks absolutely wild, I will definitely grab a ride if I visit this park. So going to surprisingly, but not really surprisingly, Disney World, this coaster is one of my dad's friend's favorite coasters, because he said it was amazing, I'm talking about Tron Life Cycle Run. This is a Vacoma family coaster, and it's a clone of, well, Tron at Disneyland Shanghai, but this was way overdue. This was originally going to open in the fall of 21, but nope, it was in the spring of 23. This coaster looks amazing. I've heard the theming for this coaster is really good. I said heard of, because I'm trying my very best to not watch a POV of Tron. I've only seen the quote unquote outdoor part, which is shown on screen, but everything else, I haven't seen in a long time. I only saw bits in the indoor part. This coaster looks fantastic. Another ride that I'm trying really hard to not watch a POV of is Guardians at Epcot. We are staying at Disney World for the best coaster overall, Guardians. This is also another Vakama family coaster, but this is a spinner instead of a light cycle. This is also a ride that I'm doing my absolute best to not watch a POV of. I only know the pre-coaster part, backwards launch, and the brake run. Everything else I haven't seen yet. I'm covering the script with the recording during this part of the video, because I do not want to get spoiled. But back on topic, this coaster looks really good. The theming is top notch, and I've heard the forces that this ride pulls are excellent. I cannot wait to go out to Epcot again and experience this coaster. So again, we're switching to B&M, but this is the last B&M on the list. So this coaster is definitely the best roller coaster at SeaWorld Orlando. It is Mako. This is one of the best B&M hypers out there, because you have the amazing floater on the camelbacks, a glossy smooth track, a pretty color scheme, and an epic station. The first drop on these new B&M hypers are fantastic, and the placement is pretty. I like the turn over the lagoon. It is a little lackluster though, but I think it's cool to show off the speed. This coaster looks amazing. So the next two coasters on the list I can honestly swap with each other, because it's a really tight matchup. And you pretty much know what the last two coasters are, but I decided to give the number 2 spot to Iron Gwazi. This RMC looks godly. 
And if you're ever in this coaster, you know. It's because you have the ejector airtime everywhere and the layout is an 11 out of 10. The inversions have the whip and you can see that in the death roll and the stall looks like it has some great hang time. This coaster also looks menacing in the skyline of Busch Gardens Tampa. I will absolutely get a few rides on this coaster when I visit the park. But this coaster is a really tight matchup between the one and only Velocicoaster. Just like I said, this is an unbelievably close matchup between this and Iron Gwazi, but I decided to put Velocicoaster at the number one spot. This coaster has everything, such as inversions, pacing, theming, airtime, and a fantastic layout. This is also my number one bucket list coaster, so this will be absolutely surreal when I ride this coaster. I can honestly swap another coaster for being my top bucket list coaster. That coaster is right of happiness. This is a tight matchup, but Velocicoaster takes the crown as the best roller coaster in Florida. So I want to hear from you guys, what's your favorite roller coaster in the Sunshine State? If you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you supported the video by giving it a thumbs up. And it would be extra great if you subscribe to the channel. Every like and subscribe helps, and it would be fantastic if we kept this pacing up with the channel's popularity. Just like I said earlier, if you enjoyed this video, do not worry, here's another video for you to watch. So make sure to keep that adrenaline pumping, and thanks for watching.